الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد there's a certain group of sahaba who are all associated together in Makkah al mukarramah this evening we look at the life of sayyidina suhaib al rumi radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and when you talk about him then he's in the same group with sayyidina bilal sayyidina khabbab Sayyidina Ammar, these were those who were considered to be the destitute of Makkah al Mukarramah. They had no family, they had no support, and it is for that reason that the Kuffar of Makkah unleashed their entire wrath on them. All their frustration, all their anger, all their malice and hatred was directed at these individuals. There's a fascinating incident that led to Sayyidina Suhaib finding himself in the position that he found himself. In fact, his father Malik ibn Sinan was a governor of an Iraqi village and he was deputed by Kisra who was the emperor of Persia. His father was well to do and he had lots of servants and lots of subjects and his mother once undertook a journey with him and that is when a trade caravan had raided him uh, and taken him uh, as a slave to the Byzantine Empire which is towards the Levant, towards the north, towards Syria and towards Byzantine, the capital which is Istanbul. So he was taken there and he was sold as a slave in the marketplace. As a young boy, he grew up over there only knowing how to speak the Roman language. He also was a very fair looking individual with reddish blondish hair. And that is why he fitted in well in the Byzantine Empire. He moved from palace to palace, from one owner to the next owner. And that is what his life was all about. Eventually, there was a chance where he had the opportunity to escape because deep down he was an Arab from the desert and he longed to return to his origins. So he had the opportunity to escape and he made his way back to the Arabian Peninsula. And somewhere along the line he met a Christian astronomer who said that the final messenger is to be announced and he comes with the final message of God and he will be in Makkatul Mukarramah. That created some interest in Sayyidina Suhaib. Nevertheless, he comes to Makkatul Mukarramah. Uh, he enters into a business partnership with uh, one of uh, the leaders of Makkatul Mukarramah, Abdullah bin Jud'an, and they start of their business. But he has this interest in the deen of Islam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who he always knew as the trustworthy one, had propagated his message and he was in Darul Arqam and one day Sayyidina Suhaib goes to Darul Arqam and when he comes there he sees uh, Sayyidina Ammar there someone who he knew from before so he asks him Mada to read what are you doing here so he responds by saying Mada to read Anta what is it that you want here so he responds by saying I've come to hear what is it that Muhammad has to say and Sayyidina Ammar says that that is my very objective. So let's go forth in here. And they come to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam present to them the message of the deen of Islam. And they then accept the message of Islam. They continue living in Makkah al-Mukarramah, being tortured and being persecuted heavily. Nevertheless, what then happens is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes the hijrah. And Sayyidina Suhaib is being persecuted by all the slaves of Makkah al Mukarramah, their masters had set them free on Sayyidina Suhaib. So he could not make hijrah immediately. When eventually he decides to make hijrah, he managed to escape from them. But he barely gets outside Makkah al Mukarramah when they come after him. And as they come after him to try and capture him and hold him back, he stops for a moment and he says, Listen, people, I have my quiver with 40 arrows here. And you all know that I am a very experienced uh, bow and arrow shooter. 
Also thereafter I have my sword. So if you come any closer, I'm going to start firing my arrows. It is certainly going to strike some of you and you will be injured. After I fired all my arrows, I'm then going to take out my sword and I'm going to work my sword on you all. That is what's going to happen. But if you want, I have two slave girls and some wealth somewhere in Mecca. Go there and take it and allow me to go. So these slaves thought, you know what, why put ourselves at risk? Let us go and take the wealth. So they took the wealth and they allowed him to go. He continued on his journey to Medina Tul Munawara. And when he came in Quba, when Nabi Sallallahu was already there, Nabi Sallallahu seen him and Nabi Sallallahu said, Wah, wah. Nabi Sallallahu said, Bakhin, Bakhin, that what a profitable transaction. Oh, Abu Yahya. Nabi Sallallahu had given him that title. Oh, Abu Yahya, what a profitable transaction. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَوْ بَتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ That those who sell themselves for the pleasure of Allah. This verse was revealed for Sayyidina Su'aib <coughs> radiallahu anhum. Nabi Sallallahu was very, very happy to see him. Then a light-hearted interaction. They were sitting on the Dastar Khan and eating. And they were eating some dates. So Sayyidina Su'aib had an infection in one of his eyes. So Nabi Sassam looked at him and said, You have an infection in your eyes and you're eating dates. So he said to Nabi Sassam, I'm looking with the other eye and then choosing the dates. So Nabi Sassam started laughing and he says, I've never seen Nabi Sassam laugh like that. He brought happiness. And this was the connection that Nabi Sassam had with the Sahaba, that uh, he brought joy to them. There was light-hearted interactions at times. Nabi Sassam praised Sayyidina Suhaib and he said, Arab, that I am the leader of the Arabs. Was Suhaib Sabiqul Rum and on the day of Qiyamah, Suhaib will be the leader of the Byzantines. Well Bilal Sabiqul Habsh and Sayyidina Bilal will be the leader of all the Africans. Was Salman Sabiqul Faris and Sayyidina Salman, he will be the leader of all the Persians. So these are the words of praise that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi uttered for this great Sahabi. He lived through the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is said that on the last moments of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, when Sayyidina Umar was stabbed and he was bleeding and at that moment when he gained consciousness, he asked Sayyidina Suhaib radiallahu anhu to perform uh, the Salah. So he led the Salah while Sayyidina Umar was there and the performance of the Salah was the sole duty of the Amirul Mu'mineen. So Sayyidina Umar anhum gave him that great virtue of leading the Salah. He passed away in around, uh, at around the age of 70. It may have been around uh, 30 after Hijrah and he is buried in Jannatul Baqi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his stage. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.